Welcome. Today we are talking swales, how to kick back the desert from taking over, how to spread water, making an abundance on your farm, homestead, or wherever you find yourself. This technique isn't for every farm, but most farms couldn't benefit. In a place like here where I have nine to 13 inches, it is key to having this system. Today we're gonna go over the installation, the management, and the cost of such a system and how you can actually do it. It's very simple and very cost effective. Let's go. What is a swale and why are we doing one? So we have here a hillside, like we do. Normally when it rains, water will come down and very little water can infiltrate the ground. And so in order to allow more time to infiltrate, what we do is build a ditch and that material we excavate from the hill, we put on top. When we get big rain events, it has to fill up the swale before water can continue going downhill. And then we keep building more of these, and so we keep collecting water. And what that does, water will infiltrate slowly, and it'll create a lens of water underneath. And when we plant our trees, they'll be able to send roots into this lens. And so they will be drought-proof year-round, even if it doesn't rain. We get nine to 13 inches of rain, and in order for trees to survive, a system like this is crucial because we'll get a lot of rain at one event. We can have a thunderstorm, drop an inch or two at one time, and instead of that mostly going away, it's able to infiltrate into the ground and we store it for use later. So we are here starting our food forest. We're with Bob and we are taking level for our swales. So we're gonna put these swales on contour. This is the first start and then I'm gonna plant my fruit trees at 15 feet spacing on top of that and then we'll plant much more. I got the game fencing going up so the deer cannot get to these hopefully here soon. I'm super excited. This is the start of a major permaculture project here on the farm. So what are we doing here, Bob? Okay, so every 15 feet, I put a flag on contour. You can see the shape the swale will take. The first step with swales is setting your grade. And you can choose to either have an angled swale so that the water runs at a 1%, 2% slope, or... Uh, you can have them on contour. With these ones, I decided just to put them on contour. I don't have to move water that great of a distance. To measure the swales, we used a simple laser level. That's all that's needed. And every 15 feet or so, we put a flag into the ground. Since these swales weren't that long, it wasn't worth bringing in a bulldozer for this job. So I was able to rent an excavator for the weekend. Bob and I measured five uh, swales. And just even that small section, we had over a thousand feet of swales and I ended up planting over 150 fruit trees into these swales. When using an excavator, it's really important to be on contour the entire time. And it's easy as you're moving the tracks to lose your bearing. And so to get a more accurate swale, what I did was running spray paint between each flag. So then I, A, I could remove the flags and not have them get damaged. And then I was able to line it up perfectly as I went with the excavator. So just a little bit of planning on that made a big difference and is able to dig these fairly quickly. Overall, to dig over a thousand feet of swale, I used the excavator for about five hours. So not, not too bad. It was just one day's worth of rental, get all this done. So here I am digging the swales. I am almost done. Going a lot faster than I thought with this mini excavator. So we're gonna plant 80 fruit trees today with an auger. It's gonna be pretty quick. This is the fastest way to plant as many trees and you need equipment if you wanna do it quick enough. And these swales, I mean, they could have been dug by hand. It would have taken a lifetime. So, you know, we gotta bless the fossil fuel energy while we have it. So I'm gonna finish spray painting my swales because I am doing this by myself and I don't have somebody to guide me. I need to go where all the flags that we stake the, the level are and then connect them with a line. And once we do that, then it's easy for me to dig by myself and I know exactly where 
the level is. I am giving for the first time a $1,500 permaculture course completely free. What you learn in this course, how to do homesteading, how to plan your homestead, how to utilize resources, all completely free. We'll have a link down below in the school community. We will see you there. Here is a swale I dug. And what I'll do is I'll come back with the excavator and trample over what I've dug. And it just gives it a nice bedding and protection as water fills up into the swale. And then we're gonna plant the trees into basically where the tire marks are on the downside. So as this swale fills up with water, it'll percolate down in here. And then this I'm gonna plant with seed, cover crop. Maybe I'm gonna do like a cover crop actually this year and within the trees. And here on my swale, this one has is one I have yet to finish. So it needs to be compacted up here. And once I do that, then it'll get smoothed out, strengthening the swale. And we got the flags, they're hard to see, but you got the flag, so I have to connect to the flag, each flag to each other with a marker so I know where to dig properly when I'm by myself. As my Mexican friends say, a trabajar muchachos, time to work, let's go. What saved me is I was able to borrow a skid steer with an auger that really helped to speed things up because we had so many trees to plant. And originally I didn't even intend to do the swale project, but I had ordered trees the year before and they never confirmed the order until they were about to ship it. So I thought I wasn't going to be able to plant them this year. So the owner of the nursery called me a week before he shipped it. And then I went into overdrive. So it goes to show you can get a swale project done in a weekend if you know what you're doing and you have the right equipment. Having that skid steer, we're able to make all 150 holes within an hour. And then with two, three people, we were able to get it all planted out within four hours. So basically a swale project. Definitely recommend this is something not very hard to do. And if you can do it yourself, because if somebody's charging you, this could be a $10,000 project versus if you piecemeal it and do it all together, it really uh, saves you on that. Right, so we are ready to start planting the food forest. The swales are done. It's been a massive undertaking. I have two really good friends, Michael and Julia, gonna help me plant. I'm gonna keep running the skid steer and keep digging because we're gonna run out of daylight and we got a lot of trees to plant, over probably 100 at this point. So yeah, let's get to it. So this is what it's gonna look like here. This peach is already blooming. This is why I had to get these into the ground. This swale project turned out better than I hoped. We were able to keep pretty much all the trees alive and was able to irrigate even more grass. As the water filled up, I was able to create channels. This was a drought year and the water ran out around midsummer and all the grass was able to cut twice after that without irrigating and which never happens really. So all the water's underground being stored, accessible to the trees and the grass. This was a test project for the bigger scale of the farm, the 20 acres that I have under game fencing now. So I will be working with this exact same model, probably on grade, just like I did here, but increase the spacing between the swales as we do the larger farm this coming fall, spring. And as I get ready to plant hundreds, if not thousands of trees in these swales. Swales are a magic tool for farms like mine where water is an issue and you have to store it. And having a nice grade and slope means I can move and store the water as I need. Swales are the way to fight off the desert. All right, let's talk about costs. How much did these swales cost me? We're looking at $600 I spent on the excavator rental for the weekend with an eight hour cost. 
and I really only ended up using five hours. I also have a lot of excavator experience, so I can go pretty quickly. And then I put in $1,500 worth of trees that I ordered bulk. But here's the thing, I ordered double and then sold those. So I was able to have a zero cost on my fruit trees. So with that being said, I wanted to make sure even though sales system works, I knew this was a drought year and my irrigation was going to get shut off and I didn't have full faith in the root system of the trees this year one going down. So I put in drip tape and all that expense was less than I want to say 200 bucks, but let's just call it 300. So for under a thousand dollars, I was able to put in this whole entire swale system over 150 different fruit trees. And I got a lot of bushes that I was able to get from neighbors and things like that for free. So over a thousand feet of swale for under a dollar per linear foot. Great deal. All right, so we are here at fall time. We're gonna show you the swales. I'm super impressed with how everything turned out this season. Super intense, hot summer. The trees survived. I did add a drip system to these trees. So a little drip emitter and I was able to tap water from one of my springs to keep the moisture. I honestly don't think that was necessary, but it was just redundancy. Throughout the season, I dug around below the swales and they were full of moisture. So it did do its job here. This is such a good technique. I'm gonna do it for the rest of the farm. We're about to do thousands and thousands of feet over in the main part of the farm now copying this exact same model. The only difference we're gonna do is increase the space in between the swales so we can run livestock in between with electric fencing. And here you have it. This is a baby apricot I planted from seed a year ago. And I transplanted when I did the swales. 15 feet spacing is what I put my trees on. Here you have a peach. A little hazelnut down here, hybrid from Mark Shepard via Jake Tekef at Cedar Springs Farms. We did a farm tour with his place. So yeah, I have apricots and peaches up on the top rows. And then down below, I have my pears and apples. Back there is all going to be, I have 20 acres of game fencing. That's all going to be swelled out with fruit trees. So we're getting ready for that. That project should be starting here in the next couple weeks and we'll do a separate video on that. And here you have an apricot with comfrey with a swale behind it. And here I did elderberry. I planted more on this top row, a lot of mixing. I got comfrey for chop and drop. Got a named variety of blackberry here that is self erect. So you keep it on trellis and it works great. We'll get a lot of food out of here. More peaches, plum, uh, no plums actually. I gotta work on that. I have a section for plums, but we have here, you can see comfrey. These are a cover crop of peas, adding nitrogen. Another blackberry, more peas everywhere intermixed here. And then an apricot with peas growing to the side of it. Overall, this is a great project. One weekend to set up and not that much maintenance to keep going. I'm excited to do this for the rest of the farm. It's really fantastic. It's gonna be able to kick the desert back, stop the desertification happening here and spread the water. I do have water and it's about managing it correctly to where we can revert back the desert, produce food out of this with just a quick and effective system known as the swale. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bam.